got to see what you see You are doing a great work in me I've decided I can stand still No, you have given me purpose All my, all my heart is yours All my, all my life is yours I will, I will make a move for you idea what I'm saying. What? I gotta go. Hey! What the point break, Quimby? Whoa! Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this is the so-and-so show. It is such a beautiful day. Oh, of course it is. It's the middle of the summer. It's bound to be gorgeous. Yeah, just look out this window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look at the ocean right next door to my house. Ocean? Yeah, you heard me. It's so placid, so serene. It would be a quite a shame if someone decided to disturb it. Oh, I wouldn't do that, John. Why? Well, haven't you ever heard of the ripple effect? <laughs> you, you throw a stone into water and ripples come away from it? And these can lead to, to bigger and bigger ripples. If the ocean is calm, let it stay calm. Let a sleeping dog lie. I see no dogs here. And if I did, I'd wake him up. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> see? See? There's no reason to be. I told you! Oh, no! Oh, no! Are you oh. okay, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the camera fell over. Oh. Hey, Steve, Steve, are you okay? Okay. What about you? Uh, I'm okay. My shoes are a little wet. Oh, okay. Well, 
What happened? I don't know exactly what you said would happen, Brandon. I threw a rock into the ocean and those ripples had an effect. Oh. Now everything's topsy-turvy. Wait, 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 wait. We're in the wrong seats. Yeah, I know. We're in the wrong seats. Okay, there's no need to be dramatic. We'll just switch and, oh. and everything will be back to normal. Good call, good call. All right. Okay. Ah! Oh, no, switch back, switch back, switch back. <sighs> okay, let's, let's, uh, let's just get on with the show and hopefully nothing else will go wrong. Okay, right, right. Okay, oh. um, the, the next thing, uh, oh. please welcome someone who knows stuff. Oh, right. It's a plate of cottage cheese. Were, were we supposed to have a plate of cottage cheese here for a guest? I don't think so. Okay. Let me check the cue board, though. Hello? Huh. Oh. It says we're supposed to have the 10th man on the moon, Charles Duke. Oh, well, well, that's not him. Clearly. Yeah. Sorry. Well, what else we got? What else are we going to do? Oh, uh, what uh, we're gonna paint a puppy? No, that doesn't seem right. right. Okay, how no. about... Uh, balance an onion on our... No head. onions! Oh, next! Okay. Oh, horse ballet. These are horrible. Yeah. These are horrible ideas. We don't have a single good one. You know, one tidal wave comes into this room and it turns the entire production all haywire. <sighs> well, we gotta do something. Okay, fine. We should have painted the puppy. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, do you have any idea what's going on here? My background is usually not this color. What, the, the wave affected you too? Oh man, I'm sorry, Kellen. I think I'll be fine. I can tell the Bible story no matter what color the background is. Way to stay positive, Kellen. Yeah. Hey, what are we talking about today? I'm talking about the apostles, who were early followers of Jesus, and when they made the best of some pretty bad and confusing times. And apparently, I'll have some help. Glad you came. Glad you're here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We'll give a blow-by-blow blow of the Bible story. On the Mel Solomon story recap. Kellen, my friend, what is going on here? My, my body is teeny tiny. I think we're seeing the effect of a wave, Melv. Uh, maybe you want to take the day off. Me? Take the day off. Come on, Kellen. I wouldn't dream of letting you tell the Bible story all by your lonesome. <laughs> Thanks. So take it away, my friend, and my brother-in-law, Greg, and I will add some tunes to enhance the experience. Right, Greg? My body is a baby doll. Can't put anything past this guy, can we, Kellerino? Hey, hey. Go for it. It's Kellen. And anyway, today's story comes from the book of Acts, chapter 5. The apostles were teaching people about Jesus and they were getting a lot of attention. But this made the religious leaders at the time very jealous. So they had the apostles thrown into jail. That night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors to the jail and let the apostles out. The angel said, go, stand in the temple courtyard. Tell the people all about this new life. Oh, I got a song about being told something new. Hit it, Greg. Greg. Greg! Baby fingers! Oh. Go Betty Bye later, Greg. Oh, okay. It's song time. <clears throat> and the seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the ticket. Somebody told me something new. It really scared me. What could I do? They said that rainbows are really round. You never see them touch the ground. It has something to do with light refraction. Back to you, Kellen. Thanks. The apostles did what the angel told them. They went to the courtyard to tell people all about the new life they had because of what Jesus had done for them. 
the religious leaders were furious and had the apostles brought to their court, which was called the Sanhedrin. The leader said, we gave you clear orders not to teach in Jesus' name, but you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. Well, I could sing you a thing or two about clear orders. Hit it, Greg. Greg. Greg! Uh, uh, where's my blankie? Oh, oh, no, Greg, where's my song? Oh, okay. There it is. One, two, three, when an order is given, you had better listen, cause you want to get the order right. Don't you miss it, I'm saying, cause I'm the one who's paying, and for the last time I said no mayo on my turkey and Swiss. What happened next, Gakelta fish? Yeah. So the religious leaders were mad because the apostles weren't doing what they wanted. They told the apostles to stop teaching about Jesus. But the apostles stood up and they said, we must obey God instead of people. You had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross. But the God of our people raised Jesus from the dead. We are telling people about these things. And so is the Holy Spirit. God has given the Spirit to those who obey him. The religious leaders wanted to put the apostles to death, but a teacher of the law named Gamaliel stood up and convinced the religious leaders to let the apostles go. Oh, I love happy endings, don't you, Greg? Yeah. Well, it wasn't all happy. The religious leaders had the apostles whipped before they released them. Yikes. But here's what I want you to see. The apostles were full of joy as they left the Sanhedrin. They considered it an honor to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. They never stopped telling people the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Even after all they'd gone through, the apostles were able to choose joy. I think I hear what you're saying, Kellen. You're saying Greg and I could be more joyful about this whole baby doll body situation. Sure. Well, you know what I gotta do now? I gotta sing a song about it. Hit it, Greg! Greg! Oh, look at the little fella. I'll tuck it out. I kinda don't wanna wake him up. Oh, you don't have to. Greg! <laughs> My finger stays like plastic! Gross, Greg. Yeah, okay. Play that joyful song. Mm. Things can be confusing, things can be tough. But you can choose joy to get through that stuff. Remember the good times, remember the fun. And focus on Jesus, cause he's number one. We'll see you later, Kellen. Hopefully next time I'll be able to reach my shoes. Right, Greg? Right. Thanks, Melvin Greg. That was great. The apostles were able to choose joy in a bad situation. It could be because God had given the Holy Spirit to help them. And guess what? When you put your trust in Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit too. The Holy Spirit can help you choose joy in whatever situation you're in, good or bad. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be happy 24 seven. It's okay to be sad. But choosing joy means you focus on what's good and remember what you're grateful for. Even when you find yourself in a situation that's confusing or different, like a different background, there's still a way to find joy. You know, I think this color actually goes better with my outfit. I agree, Kellen. <laughs> see you, Kellen. Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. I think we can choose joy even though the wave has messed everything up. Yeah, we've just gotta focus on the good things. Hmm. Any ideas? Yes. Well, let's ask them. Ooh, reveal the question. Reveal the question, I said. <laughs> reveal oh, the question. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Hold on. <sighs> oh, oh, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> okay, I'll try it. Okay, reveal the question. <laughs> <laughs> 
What are things that bring you joy? Well, it brings me joy that today I got to see the show from your perspective. It is a very different show from over here. Yeah, I'm joyful because Kellen had a great Bible story today, oh, yeah. and I really learned something. And even though the show didn't go quite as planned, I'm joyful that it turned out pretty well in the end. Yeah. Mm. What about you? What are things that bring you joy? Yeah, hope there's a lot. And until next week, I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So-and-So Show. Bye. You know what? I think I could sit over here from now on. You, no, I don't think so. How long have you been involved in this cottage industry? Is there an apartment cheese? Or other dwelling cheeses? That's yeah. a good... Like log cabin cheese? Mansion cheese? I hear that uh, uh, you've been to space. Hmm? No? No No response to that? I'm sorry if these are tough questions. Let's take a picture right now. Okay. Just... All right. Say cottage, cottage cheese. cheese. Ha, ha, ha.